introduction. Hey, let's do it. Hey, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Hope your December is going great so far. Um, mine is, thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to be doing a story time. Yes, you guys always tell me that I am such a good storyteller, which makes my head swell. <laughs> but no, really, I randomly remembered this story last night and I was like, oh my gosh, this will make for a good story time. So. It actually happened um, years ago, actually, back when I was in law school. The story itself is quite short. And by the way, I don't know why I'm breaking out, but I am. Well, you know, we trust God for healing. <laughs> um, yeah, so the story itself is quite short, but the context is what makes it interesting. So let me provide some context, okay? And I don't know if I can talk and do my brows at the same time. <laughs> I just used, let me show you. Can you see that? I just used eyeliner as brow pencil. I just saw the thing was looking black. It was looking, I said, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I probably will need to use my wipes to clean it. If not, it's going to end up looking dark <laughs> and I'll end up looking like It started back when I was in, uh, I've told the story of how I moved to the US, right? I was born and raised in Nigeria. Um, all my life I was in Nigeria, you know, before, I mean, I traveled a few times, but it wasn't until I moved to the US that I started to learn more about the US and the world and all of that. And upon getting Okay, this is not going to work. Let me just quickly do my brows and I'll be back. So, you know, I just moved to the US and, you know, I took the law school admission test and all of that. And I got into law school, you know, within a year of being in the States. So things were moving pretty fast. I was still learning about the States, the culture, the constitution, because now I was going to be a lawyer in the US. You know, I was trying to educate myself, really. Um, to understand the American lifestyle a whole lot better than I did, you know. So upon getting into law school, um, you typically schools here would have their own email system and you'd have like a student email ID and all of that so that the school could constantly communicate with the student body and all of that. So I had my um, email address and I would constantly get emails from the school, right? No voila. And then different clubs and organizations would send out emails stating, oh, if you're interested in joining, you know, it was just such a, it made you feel like you knew what was going on. So I started getting emails saying, um, uh, as you are a minority, you are expected to da, 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 da. Do you get, okay. So I remember the first time I got that email, I was like, I'm not a minority. That maybe they made a mistake. So I didn't do anything that they said in the email. I did not respond to the email. I just ignored it. <laughs> I just ignored it. Okay, good. But they kept sending the email. Today, minority day. Tomorrow, minorities are expected to next tomorrow. It was just always something, you know? And it was always something about minority, minority. <laughs> Kidney, kidney, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> you know, I was like, I'm not a minority. Why do these people keep sending me these emails that they need to unsubscribe me because I am not a minority, you know? And 
my understanding of what a minority was at the time was that, oh, you know, um, special needs, uh, extra assistance needed, you know. <laughs> I can't even believe that was what I was thinking it was. That was what I thought it was, you know. Every time I saw minority, I was like, okay, no, but I don't need extra assistance. But no, I don't require, you know. So I was like... Based on my understanding of what a minority was, I was like, no, but I don't belong to this category of people that they need to, that they need to stop sending me this email. So it got to a point where it actually became, it started, it started getting annoying. Because I was like, initially I was like, okay, I'll just ignore it and just let them say whatever they want to say, right? So I said, I'll, I'll just ignore it. But then it kept coming non-stop like it just kept on coming i was like okay and it was always something like it wasn't always the same email it was oh minority day minority activities minority uh groups or minority needs or something it was just always something so it got to a point where i was just like okay i'm done they need to take me off of this email list you know like i don't want it anymore so what do I do? I packed my, I waited until after class one day, then I packed my things and I went straight to the student body office. So the student body had an office very close to the dean's office. So I went there and I, I went in with so much anger. <laughs> It wasn't like, but it wasn't like I was ready to fight, <laughs> but I was like, you could tell something was wrong with the way I was looking, how I was walking, everything, you know what, <laughs> break a transition. Let me quickly do my eyeshadow. Um, you know, I walked in there, it was a very busy day, like there were, there were, there were a lot of people in the student body office at the time when I went. So I walked in and, you know, I went straight to the president. <laughs> I didn't even go to the secretary. One black guy like that. Lorenzo. Was it Lorenzo Banks? Lorenzo? Is that was Lorenzo? Yeah, very nice guy. I think I'm even friends with him on Facebook. Self. Um, anyway, so I saw, Lo I walked in, I looked around, I saw Lorenzo and I walked straight to him. And in a very loud voice, <laughs> I, I don't know what possessed me because typically I'm, I'm not a confrontational person, you know, but I don't know what possessed me that day. In a very loud voice, I said to Lorenzo, hi, Lorenzo, how are you? Listen, I keep getting these emails that talk about minority this, minority that. I'm not a minority. Why do you guys keep sending me these emails? And I kid you not, everyone, everyone in the room turned and looked at me. <laughs> everyone in the room, like the room just went quiet. Everyone turned, looked at me, and Lorenzo wanted to laugh, but because of how serious I looked, he couldn't, you know, I could see it on his face. And then he goes, oh, Adenike, um, no, 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 he didn't immediately explain. Oh, no, I didn't stop there. He didn't, no, I almost mixed up the story. So after everyone looked at me, I, in my head, I was like, yeah, you know, like, I, I don't need, I don't have special needs. I'm not disabled. I'm not a minority. <laughs> I was, I was digging the hole for myself. I just kept going. You know, I just kept talking. I should have shut up, but I kept talking, you know. And after that, Lorenzo was like, no, Adenike, uh, Adenike, <laughs> that's not what it means. And I was like, huh? And then he says, yeah, so you know how there are white people? And I said, yes. And then he's like, okay, so minority people are people that are colored. I was like, hmm? I was like, yeah, so black people, uh, you know, uh, if you're Mexican, if you're Hispanic, if you're Asian, if you're, you know, Arabian, 
pretty much anyone that is not white American is considered a minority. I, I remember I was, I was dumbfounded because it made absolutely no sense to me. And I was like, oh. And then I said, oh, I'm sorry. And he's like, no, 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 it's okay. And then I was like, well, that's strange. <laughs> because where I come from, <laughs> there is no minority. We are all majority. <laughs> My lashes. <laughs> okay, where was I? Yeah, I was talking about my reaction to being told that I was considered a minority in America. Um, you know, I, you, I, of course, you know, I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know and everything. And I walked away. But I think in that moment, they also realized how it sounded, you know, but unfortunately, there's nothing they could do about it. <laughs> it is what it is, you get. Um, but like I told, and Lorenzo knew me because one, I'm Nigerian, and two, out, out of like three or four black people in our set, like maybe in my set, we had like, let's say we had like 60 or 70. No, that's a lie. We had like 100 people in my set. Out of 100, there were just five of us that were black, and I was the only African. <laughs> so I stood out. Um, anyway, so Lorenzo knew me, that's the student body president at the time. And I mean, he understood my confusion, you know, cause I was like, okay, where I come from, there's no majority or minority. Like we've all been considered, we've always, like, I've never even heard it before, you know, and leaving there, it was, was a shock to me that, oh my gosh, this is what the reality is living as a black person in America. Um, it took me a while to come to acceptance of it because I was just like, I just did not understand it. But eventually I did. Not like I agreed with it, but I understood where the title came from, you know, being considered a minority and all of that. Um, when you look at it, even if you say, oh, ah, now, wow, is that what it is in America? But when you think about it, even in Nigeria, there's still uh, segregation. You know, there's Yoruba, there's Ahusa, there's Igbo, there's intertribal wars, intertribal um, generalizations. You know, there, there are just so many things separate us as humans. Um, and... Unfortunately, we don't have any control over it as far as how we are born, you know, where you're giving birth to. And I'm not even trying to control anything, but I just like, I like the highlights that I get on my face when I do this. I feel like my face always looks a bit dull if I don't finish up with the concealer. And I always use the same brush as my foundation because who will help me to wash brush? Okay, and then we just kind of blend it out. Can you see? Can you see how, like, it just kind of, my face just kind of popped just because I did the highlights. Yeah, like my mom always says, let me just put this over here. Like my mom always tells me, I know what looks good on me. It's not pride, I just do. <laughs> my powder is the... CC powder and this is my brush is the Jessup oh no well yeah there we go it's the Jessup um, buffer that's what I'm using as my to apply my powder um, and I ended up becoming president of the Black Law Student Association in my school no, I'm not bragging. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, that was how involved I was with everything. Just some lip gloss. No biggie. What you think? What you think? This is the very last item I use. It's the e.l.f. makeup mist. I just spray it on my face. Ha ha ha.
and that's it. See, it gives my face that, that finished look, that glow. Um, I was thinking I was going to wear a wig, but I think I'll let... Yes, this is all my hair, by the way. <laughs> I think I'll let my hair down. Just brush it. See, I almost forgot my concealer at the back of my hand. All right, so I tried, right? I tried. <laughs> Thank you for, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you learned from it as well. Um, it was an interesting story and a big learning moment for me as well. If you can relate with it, maybe, uh, you know, as an, as an African living in America or as an Asian, whatever culture, whatever your, uh, uh, wherever you were born and you had to move to America or whether you are even American and you were born and raised in America, whatever your story is, if you can relate with the story in any way, please let me know in the comment section. I would like to hear your experience as well, okay? Thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. I can't wait to see you again very, very soon. I pray God blesses you, your homes, your marriages, your relationships. Most importantly, I pray God blesses you. Remain in God and God bless you. Bye. <laughs>